All right, everyone, welcome to another special show of Heal Thyself, taking the time out of the week. I truly do, I say it every week, appreciate you all for coming to the show. It's very special. It's very gratifying on this side, but really the biggest part is that we can empower each other and it's a beautiful thing. Today's show is going to be incredible and I say it every week, of course I do, because it is incredible. We're gonna talk a little bit about something that's very near and dear to me. You heard me talk about it for years, some on this show, definitely on social media about manifestation, creation, law of attraction, whatever you want to call it. But really my goal today is to teach you all about what it is, what it means, what our power is, and how to create. Like we are all having that ability and capacity to create, and I want you all to be empowered after this Knowledge Bomb segment that you are on fire and ready to shift and change your life. We also have a very special guest, Meg from A Whole Health Life. She is a rogue pharmacist, a pharmacist who just decided these medications are not getting people better or healthier. And now she's using her power and her expertise to really educate about what the root cause of health means. So of course she's aligned with our message here. I really can't wait to get to talk to her. But before we go anywhere, let's dive deep into manifestation, into creation, and go right to this knowledge bomb. All right, manifestation, creation, right? I know you all heard about all of this and you know, you maybe came up on your Instagram, maybe you saw a book, maybe if you live in California, you just walk past someone in the street talking about it. But what is the validity behind it? How powerful is it? Um, you heard me speak about it a few times on the podcast. I certainly had many guests come here and touch on it or really dove deep into it, but I really wanted to start clarifying and opening up what this all means. Now, you definitely heard me speak about it on social media. I've done more than a few posts. Even recently, visualization is the key to manifestation. I did a IGTV, an impromptu one, talking about like what blocks your manifestation, what blocks your creation. Um, so for, for us, it's really important to understand how we can hone in this power, right? And I want to be clear, like this is a show on health and we talk a lot about physical health, right? And that's the sexy stuff, right? People want to get their gut health better and people want to get their joints feeling better, autoimmune disease, even cancer. But really health is much deeper than that. And you know that. And if you understand me and resonate with my vibe, you know that I talk much, much deeper about that. To me, physical manifestations are just sort of the part of the iceberg that we see. And then under that, the real root of it is much, much, much deeper. And it took me a long time to understand this, but really as I met more and more healers, learned more about myself and really what true healing is, right? Outside of medicine, outside of even functional naturopathic medicine, deeper, deeper stuff. This is the true, true stuff. So I really wanna empower you all. That's the message of the show, but today, I really want you guys to be lit on fire so you can shift hopefully shift your life for the better, right? We can all do better with our lives. We can all optimize it. So you can't be fully physically healthy without being mentally, emotionally, and spiritually vibrant. The robustness of your health as a whole is truly dependent on who you are and your relationship to others. And that's deep, but it's your truth. So with that said, it's probably one of the most important shows I'm gonna do. One of the things that gets me most excited when I wake up is that I, I get get to teach people how powerful they are and what a thing to wake up to i can actually wake up and go i know how powerful i am and i know the gifts that i've been given so i'm going to share that with people and help them remember it's pretty powerful stuff and i want you all to be doing that i want you to understand that you have this life and a beautiful set of tools and gifts in order to utilize those that power that you have and share it with others so i'm going to teach you how so think about the most powerful force you can think of, right? Maybe it can be a nuclear bomb, maybe it can be the Big Bang, but that force dwarfs the power that you have to shift and create. And we've seen it, right? We've seen the power that we have be used for such good and make massive changes in the world, and we've seen the other side of it, right? The power where we use, it's based in rooted in fear, where it's done a lot of damage, right? So. We, we can choose where we wanna focus that power pretty much. But let me say this very simply, no matter what your religious belief is, we're talking about ancient, ancient truths. We are energetic beings and this we know. It's the reason grounding works. It's the reason I talk about grounding. It's, energetic, it's an energetic transaction that happens. But our brain, our hearts, all of our organs work on electrical impulses. It's the very life that we are. We are electric beings, as Dr. Sebi actually said. 
And we know this. Einstein proved this in one of mathematics' most famous equations. E equals mc squared. That means energy and mass times the speed of light squared are interconvertible. They change, right? So what that simply means is energy can become mass times the speed of light and vice versa. It's different forms of the same thing. So let's simplify that. Uh, as energetic frequency slows down, it creates mass. Everything you see and don't see is energy. The things you see are simply heavier on the mass side of the equation of E equals mc squared. And the things you cannot see, right? the human visibility spectrum only allows us to see certain wavelengths. We definitely aren't seeing everything. right? You can't see a radio wave. You can't see a microwave. You get a scan. You can't see the x-ray. And you can think of death as the opposite. right? The life that animates us, the energy that we are, the frequency of life, that's heavier on the other side of the equation, the E part, the energy part. So what's the whole point of this? Why am I talking about this crazy stuff, right? What was Einstein talking about? I want you all to understand that the cumulative energy that is within each of the atoms that make us up is unprecedented. We are energy, as I just mentioned, and we have the power to create. It's our very nature. We are creative beings. We create every single day, all day, every second of the day. Whether we're conscious of it or we're not, we are absolutely without a doubt, undoubtedly creative beings. When I learned this, I, uh, I was as much empowered as I was overwhelmed because all of a sudden, in that very moment, I realized that I was responsible for the way my life unfolded. It's a lot of responsibility. But with that said, it's also made life a lot more fun and empowering because now I'm able to create whatever the hell that I want. And no one outside of me is creating or controlling my human experience, which was sort of the opposite of what I'd grown, grown up to believe religiously. But uh, I had the answer to myself and understanding that my creation is my creation. And it goes very much so within the power vested in me. And that's us, creative beings, as I mentioned. So listen to how creative you are. Your thoughts are energy. We can measure a thought, kind of. You can't measure a single neuron to neuron communication. We're not that sensitive yet, but the brain you can measure as a whole in its function of thought. So Charles Jennings, the director of neurotechnology at MIT, he said it best. These tools aren't sense enough to record the activity of a single neuron, as I just mentioned. It's more like an airplane view of traffic. It's hard to see an individual car, but it's easy to see if it's rush hour. So simply said, you can measure the culmination of thought patterns, but not necessarily the one thought. But regardless, we are like antennas and we are receiving signals all the time, receiving and sending them out, receiving and sending them out. And our thoughts, our words, our actions, our subconscious beliefs about ourselves are sending those electrical signals constantly since we've been born. And those electrical signals in waves are the very primers to the reality that we are experiencing. This is crazy, I know. But as energetic beings, we are creating our human experience every second of the day, as I just said before. So what does that mean? It means we must be crystal clear and create clarity on what the highest version of us looks like. What are we thinking? What are we saying? What are we being? What are we doing? What are we having? And those signals need to be sent out in alignment. This is why I constantly talk about rituals, right? Because the importance of daily audits on yourself can clarify the vision and view of what you want to create. So you need that version of you to be so clear that you can see it, you can taste it, you can touch it, you can smell it, you can hear your words of what you're saying. The version of you that you create is up to you. There's no judgment on my side, right? A person can be full of love, peace, joy, happiness, gratitude, all that beautiful stuff. Or you can be rooted in fear, hatred, anger, sadness, and resent. And your creation is your creation. That's not for me to judge. But I will bring to light a very important point. What you emit, remember we're those antennas. Think about an antenna sending out those signals of thoughts, of words, of actions, and of subconscious beliefs about yourself. Those are the four signals that are coming out of the antenna. What you emit as your creation for the antenna is almost exclusively what you're going to attract of a like vibration. If you choose fear, hatred, anger, sadness, and resent, then undoubtedly you will all of a sudden begin to experience the people, the places, the things, situations, circumstances that are going to surround that vibrations. But here's the best part. You can change those signals any given time of day, any point of the day, 
any moment of your life. And that is so empowering, right? Because you can, once you become aware of those thoughts, those words, those actions, and those subconscious beliefs, you can shift completely the reality which you're going to be experiencing. And you do it with reflection and intention of creating yourself anew, right? What you said and did and created in the past is not you anymore. It's only a version of you that existed in that moment in time. And that's super empowering. For me, that makes life so much fun, right? You can create who you are, however you are, whenever you are, however you want. The version of me that I've created and you see as Dr. G has been something that has been on my mind, uh, an avatar that I created many, many years ago, and now it's just coming to light. This has been a very intentional creation of mine, and what I'm trying to submit to you all is that you can create very intentionally the creation of yourself, the version of yourself that you want. And of course, what do you want to create? The highest version of you is the embodiment of love, right? That's what every ancient sage has ever spoken about. Every ancient teacher speaks about you being the highest version of yourself, enlightenment, right? Uh, heaven, that's that's literally just you being the highest version of yourself, and that's love. The embodiment, the physical embodiment of that. That's why we're here. Um, so really, uh, you want to be that version of yourself that is so embody that when you walk into a room people feel it so much so that they're reminded of who they are and we all have that frequency we always had it it's within us it's, we don't have to realize anything it is us all we have to do is remove those egoic stories that we created and concepts of ourselves that are not true right and to be truly authentically who we are and it's ironic that some of our authentic selves or our authentic selves are the same for everyone it's just true really radiating love all right, so with all that said, let me share with you my tips on creating and manifesting. These, this is what I do. This is what has helped me for the past 10, 15 years and what I want to share with everyone so we can start putting it into practice, right? This show's about actionable stuff. I'm not just going to talk mumbo jumbo new age stuff. I want, you to, I want you to really put it into your life. So number one, first and foremost, stop. Just stop doing and start being. Create the space for clarity. Man, we do and do and do. We go and go and go. We never stop and be. Really, the first step to all of this is stopping and realizing how in your ego you are and how much in your mind you are creating. And understand that your thoughts, words, actions, and subconscious beliefs are creating your reality. And you can break that, but you got to stop and you got to create the space. Number two, write. The reflection step is so, so important, right? Because all of a sudden, you're writing out a list of all of the people, the places, the things, the situations, the circumstances in your life that are not serving you or your highest version of yourself. Because all of a sudden now you're seeing, wow, this person in my life is actually a F no, not a F yes. It's an anchor in my life. Someone who, who's holding back the highest version of me or this place that I work at or this place that I go to, these things in my life, this situation I keep realizing every single day or the circumstance that I'm in, all of a sudden you see that they're not adding as an asset, right? But all of a sudden they're an expense to your highest version of yourself. So it's a very important step. This is called this is called an audit your life step. And you may need to make some cuts, but you're gonna allow new space. Number three, visualize. This is one of my favorite parts, right? I'm a visual person, creatives, we all are creatives, but we all have the ability to close our eyes and see things, right? So use that power that we have and create what the highest version of yourself looks like, talks like, feels like, speaks like, and then talk, feel, vibrate in that frequency, right? Start feeling into that, start leaning into that person. How do you feel? How do the people around you feel? How do they respond to you? What are you doing daily? What are you saying daily? What are the gifts that you have that have become so normal to you that you don't even know that you're gifted with them? But this is a very special tool that you can use to help other people realize the same thing about themselves, that power that they have. The visualization step is so important because now you have a reference point that you can be. You can go back every day back to the reference point that you were using. So you need to remember you are that highest version of yourself now. You ain't going anywhere. You don't have to go anywhere. It's remembering that you've already been there. Remember what I said about subconscious stories and, and concepts that the ego has created. You move that aside, you are already there. Trust me. Serendipitously, you will understand that you'll begin to attract the instances in your life and in your brain to show you that version of you. This is where the magic happens. Because all of a sudden, as you create that version of you, you will see throughout the days, maybe even the months, that in front of you is an instance to validate that creation of yours. And all of a sudden, by validating that creation of yours, 
you create a new brain connection and that becomes a new reality. So say, for example, I say to myself, I'm going to be much more of a financially generous person. I want to give more charity. Undoubtedly, at some point in the future, I will have that very instance, maybe even when I least expect it, for me to give financially to someone. And the very act of doing so creates a new brain connection where you validate and see to yourself that you have that ability and capacity to do that. And that's just you know giving charity, but whatever it may be, as you create that version in your head, keep a very keen eye to see how you are presented with that in the next coming weeks or months and make the decision. Be aware that all of a sudden you can create a new habit by creating that decision. It's pretty crazy. Number four, let go. Here's a caveat. And I mentioned earlier when I said the antenna analogy, your subconscious beliefs about who you are are the only illusion that is blocking you from being the highest version of yourself. Remember when your family uh, or your classmate or someone you remember in your past said something about you not being enough or you being too much. And whether it be one time or over and over in your life, we're really impressionable as young kids and we believe that to be real. But the thing is, it never was real, ever. So it's interesting because we take that as a reality and we create a story around it. And then we create more and more validation through our experiences that that is true. The interesting part is that it's never true. It's a concept or a story. And it's interesting because our ego believes it to be true throughout our lives about who we are. But remember what I said earlier, we can always construct and deconstruct who we are by letting go of those concepts and stories that are not even true. So like antennas, we attract more and more of that creation in instances to validate those false beliefs and false stories. That's our creation. But what if I told you it's not nor has ever been your truth. It's actually a fable about yourself. I was told throughout my life, not by parents, I had wonderful parents, but throughout life that I was dumb, I was incapable, uh, I was never going to be truly in love, um, I was never going to be financially abundant, and as much as I heard it over time, I actually started believing it over and over and over. And when I had the self-awareness to look back as those as falsities and not true, not a version of myself that even exists anymore, I broke those neural connections in my brain as real and I created new connections in my brain, new realities that I can see myself as true. And what happens? My subconscious thoughts about myself changed. So all of a sudden, what was coming out of that antenna was a new subconscious thought about who I was and my relationship to myself and my relationship to others. And all of a sudden, that powered up my thoughts were and actions. So remember, if you are struggling with a belief about yourself that is not true, but was told to you by parents or friends or acquaintances or teachers or whoever, whatever authoritative figures, you can always go back and forgive that, forgive yourself, and then let them go. It's not true. Even if it was true all your life, it doesn't have to be true tomorrow. So you can always release and let that go because those subconscious thoughts are really blocking your true creation, the power to create. And lastly, number five, belief. Belief is the craziest thing and it's corny. We see it in movies. You got to believe. But it's so true. Belief means that no one, no authoritative figure, no family member, even a religious idol can come down and tell you that your creation or manifestation will not come true. If anyone is going to block you from doing it, it is simply going to be you. It is simply going to be those subconscious thoughts about yourself. No one else. You can create anything, absolutely anything within your ability and capacity. I ain't going to be an NBA basketball player. I'm not tall enough. I'm not fast enough. I don't have the skills. But within my skill set, I absolutely believe I can create anything in the world that I want. So why do world records get broken in chunks? It's because people believe the impossible what their belief in the impossible, it becomes real. And when it becomes real, that creeps into their conscious attainment. And when it's in their conscious attainment, then the records start breaking. So the irony was that it was always real. It was always attainable. So what we have to do is expand our capacity to believe that we can create really whatever we want. And what I'm saying is to believe in your power to create. There is no one in this world that is going to tell me that before I die, I won't reach hundreds of millions of people. That's for sure. That's I already know is going to happen. But ask yourself, what is your attainment? What is your impossible? And really, really start believing so no authoritative figure nor yourself will ever tell yourself differently. So five years ago, I wouldn't have believed it. But now there are platforms that I can do it. 
absolutely. And to me, hundreds of million people is just like the first step. That's 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 nothing. I know it can be billions of people. If, if that can come, then that's beautiful. But I do believe that. So use that confidence on yourself. I promise you it's one of the most powerful things. Keep yourself in alignment. Keep yourself in integrity. Be your highest good. Be the highest version of yourself. And there ain't nothing you can't create. I promise you that. All right. That was a good one. It felt good. Something was flowing out of me, and I hope that it really resonated with you. I hope it didn't sound too new agey, but really more in the empowerment part of it, knowing that you can use these actionable steps to start creating. Take Just at the very least, take an audit of your life. Just see if the people, places, things, situations, circumstances are even serving you. And if they're not, know that there are other ways to really, really cause freedom within your life. And it's beautiful stuff. All right. I can't wait to get this guest in. We're going to talk about the the real power that we can have with changing our perspective on health and understanding that pharmaceuticals are not always the answer. They're there. They're great, but they ain't always the answer. So let's get this conversation going with me. All right, everyone. Today's special guest, Meg Kilcup. She's a pharmacist, but not any pharmacist, right? Here's a pharmacist who is actually trying to get people off drugs. I'm really I'm in shock by this, but I can't wait to have this conversation. So welcome to the show, Meg. Thank you. I am so happy to be here. Um, heart seriously full of gratitude. So thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, and I'm and I'm thankful that you came out from uh, sunny Seattle to <laughs> to, right. co- to come to cold California. <laughs> really hard to leave Washington to come to California. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, we were just you know when we when we first were talking through Instagram, uh, I was I was like my eyes open to see like that there's a pharmacist out there who's like counterintuitively doing something that you would right. Think I went that, a bit rogue. <laughs> you, the rogue pharmacist should yeah. actually be your handle. <laughs> it now should. that I think Might about it. Might need to change it. Yeah. yeah. So what got, what 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 do you what's rogue mean for you? And like right. what, how did that happen? Sure. So, you know, my whole adult life, I've been generally a holistic individual. Um, always leaned towards movement and nutrition and all that. But after being in healthcare for ten years, um, I kind of got to see how, first of all, the system is pretty broken, unfortunately, and we kind of have this separated out medical system that's broken down to all these little pieces. And I think that's kind of the same way that we see people into these silos and, you know, symptoms and diagnosis. And after seeing pill after pill after pill being prescribed and all the downstream effects of that, I'm like, how can we stop this, right? How can we prevent people from going off one pill leading to another pill leading to another medication? So many more side effects, so many more, you know, things going away in the body because we're adding these chemicals in rather than healing, you know, going, taking a step back and thinking, okay, what is the cause of, you know, this person's symptoms? Why are they feeling that way? Like what is going on in their body? Um, so rather than, you know, naming a problem and then treating it with, you know, quote, first line treatment, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, why don't we take a step back as healthcare providers and as people um, together and think, okay, let's, let's solve this for like a sustainable healing so people can actually feel well, you know? So Mm -hmm. yeah, that's kind of where the thought process all began. Yeah. I think the same here when I was, um, I started to see what the system looked like right? and I saw how folks, especially older folks were getting on medication Yes. and developing a side effect to that medication, but diagnosed and then taking another oh, medication absolutely. for it's that like, side effect. Oh, now you have irritable bowel syndrome from your acid reducer? Great, let's give you medication for IBS, right? And so it's like one thing after another, you know, chronic headaches, okay, then you pile on chronic pain relievers, which add a whole new layer of, you know, problems. So yeah, it's kind of crazy when you really think about it that, you know, some of these people, like you're saying, especially the elderly, aren't like 15, 20 medications because mm-hmm. it's just like they're treating all their side effects. And that's not really shocking because our bodies are like this chemical cascade of events going on all the time. And so when you mess up with those naturally occurring reactions, you know, when you block a receptor with a drug or you, you know, divert a pathway or whatever you're doing with that specific drug to solve a symptom um, under a spotlight, you're going to set off this whole cascade of events. Um, And so that's why I've developed this like deep passion to help people realize that we can actually take a step back and heal and not have to turn Mm -hmm. to chemicals. I mean, yes, it's great that they're there. It's great to have those products when we need them. Right. Um, but so many of them are overused and, you know, 
it's easy oftentimes, right? It's a quick fix and that's kind of like our society. And when I realized that that's kind of what pharmacy was <laughs> showing me, I was like, wow, I want to be part of the solution for people to try to get off of their medications if they can, to empower them to create their health rather than empowering them to be adherent to their medication schedule. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. And for us, for like folks to understand how medications work, they sort of force the person's physiology, their biology right. to start working a certain way. Right. Uh, kind of like it, hijack it. It's kind of hijack. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Rather than understanding, well, well why? Like right. why, what happened here right. in this part of the body? Right. Um, and, it, and again, like you said, it's a great like safety net. If you're walking a tightrope, you have a net now, right? Perfect. Yep. But uh, it, it's a go-to and it's, and right. it's, oh, the over prescription is so egregious to me. Right. I and see people just get, get a prescription in and out. You know? Oh, absolutely. And I think oftentimes something that I learned is I've worked with systems, you know, macro level. And something I learned is the providers are often just giving patients prescriptions, even if they think it's the wrong thing, because they just want to satisfy the person. They mm -hmm. want to satisfy the patient. And so I'm like, wow, how do we empower people to actually understand their bodies, understand nutrition and gut health and all these things, right? So they aren't thinking, I need to go to the doc and get my prescription. Mm -hmm. Like that's not the answer um, to whole health, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I think it's, there's so many layers. And I think when it comes to medications, like you said, it's so quickly prescribed. I mean, I mentioned acid reducers, so quickly prescribed, antibiotics, so many things that have so many downstream effects. And so when we take that quick fix for that moment in time, it doesn't stop there. Yeah. You know, what's, what's crazy to me and just thinking about, for example, like you said, acid reducers, um, they'll reduce your ability to absorb B12 right. and certain minerals, right. which is an issue because then, okay, great, you're not getting heartburn, but all of a sudden you're becoming depleted in vitamins and minerals, right. which are essential to essential your health. Essential in life. Like that's why our body, our body is designed that way because we need that acid. So it's kind of ironic that, you know, we should not be shocked at these quote side effects. This is just our body can't function when we kind of hijack the system, like mm -hmm. you're saying. Um, and yeah, I think that happens with literally every medication that is out there. I think something that I've also learned being a pharmacist is you hear over and over, you know, this drug is benign, you know, this is safe, this is effective, you know, no major issues. And then you come to find out five years down the road, 10 years down the road, oh my gosh, there's like major, mm -hmm. major problems with this increased risk of stomach cancer or, you know, attacks gut health or, you know, anything. And it's like, wow, nothing is truly safe and effective in the sense of these are chemicals that are going to cause effects in our body. So we have to be thinking, how can we prevent needing that in the first place? Because all these best practices are always going to be changing. Evidence is always going to be changing, but we can go back to like the core of who we are mm -hmm. and, and, you know, strengthen that. Yeah. Well, that's pretty incredible stuff. I think one of the things that really stuck out of nature and what we do as human and mankind in the, in the right. field <laughs> is uh, the example of white willow bark, mm. um, Salix alba. Mm -hmm. And th what they do is they took the salicin and extracted and isolated it mm -hmm. into salicylic acid. And, right. <laughs> and then we have aspirin, right? All right. But interestingly enough, we know that aspirin can is a potent pain reliever, right? But it also can stress the stomach, right? Right, inflame the stomach, gastritis, exactly. All the things. Yeah, so yes. you know the gastritis. So the, the the most impressive part is that when you take the white willow bark, the constituents that surround the acid mm. help coat and protect the stomach, as if nature already the, knew what each constituent does. Designed. Isn't that incredible? That's amazing. When I heard that, I was like, "Holy shit! Like, what are we doing?" It's like we kind of have to go revert back in time, like keep the positives from, you know, conventional medicine. Mm -hmm. Like, yes. Okay. This is great. We have like emergency care, all mm -hmm. sorts of things. So critical. But when it comes to like what you're talking about, there's so much power in nature. And I think that oftentimes that is, that's the key, right? Mm -hmm. Not just in what we eat, but how are we interacting with nature every mm -hmm. day? Like how are we connecting with other human beings every day? That all of that creates our health. But when we, you know, 
like you're saying, when they change it, it's not how our body's, you know, meant to absorb it, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, aspirin's a great example because for, you know, I feel like for decades, it's like, you know, everyone over a certain age, aspirin, yeah. heart health, right? Mm-hmm. It's like the answer, like live however you want, but just like pop your aspirin, you'll be great. And it's like, oh, now the recommendation is, okay, actually that increases your risk for GI bleed, not actually safe. And so I think, you know, my message there is you can't treat these recommendations as the holy grail, mm-hmm. right? Because we're going to find out the ramifications either now or in five years or in 10 years, right? And the unfortunate thing is that the paradigm of which um, allopathic medicine is under is that that's all they know. Right. That's that's what they're taught in Truly really, really, really you know. hard, hard four years of allopathic medical school. You're learning about how the body works. Right. But then the solutions to the problems that you learn in school are only under the umbrella of pharmaceuticals. Right. Absolutely. Maybe that's some all physi- I learned. Yeah. Maybe some physical manipulation if you go to DO school. But right. really, that's all. That's the only toolkit you have. Right. Which is why you see massive amounts of conventional doctors now learning functional medicine because they go, well, damn, like totally. my toolkit is Their so limited. Patients aren't getting better. They're like, wow, exactly. they're actually just getting sicker because we've covered up the symptom. Mm-hmm. And it didn't get, you know, heal themselves for not resetting any balance. Mm-hmm. And you're right, we don't, we aren't really giving providers the tools that they need or pharmacists. I didn't even know what gut health was until I started looking into it on my own. Mm-hmm. And I was in pharmacy school for, of course, four years residency, all sorts of targeted training, right? Zero education on that. And I think it just goes to show you that we aren't looking at the body as a whole, as a system, right? Mm -hmm. We're thinking about in these like, you know, like chapters of a book, right? Mm -hmm. And that's kind of how we think about it, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, we just had Zach Bush on this show. Right. And he had an incredible podcast with us. So, so he not (laughs) only talked about, thank you, talked about the connection between all of our systems, but our systems and nature and how we're very much so intimately tied and connected to the health of nature around us. So God, like if we can just start teaching our providers that, yes, how different health would be for everyone and recommendations and just how people heal. I mean, think about today, right now, there's so much fear of even being in nature. And if you're outside, you need to sanitize like crazy, clothe your body and the toxins and Mm -hmm. the antibacterial, right? It's like the opposite of where we need to be moving um, to actually not only heal ourselves, but right, our connection with nature, being Mm -hmm. outside, being with people. um, I completely agree with that. And I think that I hope more and more people and, you know, healthcare professionals are realizing that we are going in the wrong trajectory to actually, you know, have that, a a life of vitality, right? And Mm -hmm. energy and like life, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, one thing that I get so happy about is seeing uh, these alternative practitioners who are actually shifting the consciousness around health, right? having so much uh, interaction and so much engagement with people because they're like, well, damn, like, Yes. Especially the youth, like 20s and up, yes. they're like really paying attention to maybe other ways possible, mm-hmm. right. which is amazing to me. It is amazing. It's, I love it. It's like you can kind of see the change, like churning, right? Mm-hmm. Like we're going to get there. But together, we kind of, we have to raise that awareness, right? We have to like think, okay, there's got to be a better way. Like what if we funneled all the money going into like drug treatments or at least part of it and thought about how do we funnel that into thinking about prevention, and healing, right? Mm-hmm. Like, or, I mean, I just think there's so much power in that. So. I know. The the amount of money we put in developing new immunotherapies or chemotherapies, exactly. imagine, imagine oh half gosh. that goes into teaching people or even researching right. the true root causes of cancer right. and then teaching people how right. to be empowered, make simple, cheap changes right. about what they can do. Just like, I don't even think, I mean, most people aren't aware of like, what is you know, my cumulative toxic burden mean, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and all of that adds up and can create cancer, right? But that's not talked about. It's mm-hmm. just like cancer happens and then boom, you know, treatment, et cetera. But um, I completely agree. And I think that, um, you know, I think that not only just the the money could be fueled there, but our like our energy and our conversations mm-hmm. like this, just, you know, raising this awareness in society that there's a, there's a different way available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, a really different way. So I'd be curious to know at what point in your path were you like, okay, yeah, like I want to be a pharmacist and I, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to give these pills out. Right. At at what point did you go, oh no, 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 there's something else. Like there's more to this. Was there ever a moment? You know, there, I have had a few moments, you know, I became a pharmacist. It was kind of like when you're 18 and you're really like young and immature. I was like, oh, I want to be a doctor, but I don't like blood. So I'll just be a pharmacist, you know, and like 
the next thing is history, right? Um, but I've never actually worked in a pharmacy. I've always worked in the system level. And I, you know, I've had people say to me, I had a surgeon say to me once, I was trying to work with him on um, reducing the use of antibiotics, um, just reducing medication are really important things for patient safety, for patients having surgery. And you know, he was like, you know what? We both know this isn't about safety. This is about money. Mm. <laughs> that was hard for me to hear. Mm. You know, I was like, wow, I am in this for people, right? And for health and for, you know, safe surgeries. And to hear things like that, it'll really just kind of shake you at your core. Um, and I think after I've gotten about like a million emails that have like a drug recall or like a new side effect, you're just like, wow, these are not the answer. And so I think it was kind of a few big moments, but also just over time, seeing how broken it all is and feeling um, just this like major calling to empower people to, you know, try their very the hardest like every day we get to wake up and we can create health every day like that's a beautiful thing so i wanted to kind of be part of that story rather than the story of perpetuating what's going on every day otherwise mm -hmm. so 100 mm -hmm. yeah. that's that's a powerful thing that uh decision that you made as far as career or your impact because i truly believe your impact will be much more massive and profound than right. just you know, working at CVS and giving pills, which can actually change someone's life and or take away pain or, you know, take away heartburn. Yes. But as we just said, may arise a new side effect. Right. You Absolutely. know, and they might see you again in two months for something else, oh. which is insane. But, yes. you know. Yeah. So you did mention uh, antibiotics mm -hmm. with the surgeon. And I know you have a real passion about antibiotic resistance mm -hmm. and just uh, how it affects your gut. Mm -hmm. um, first of all, when it comes to antibiotic resistance, which is a major concern, how much of a threat is it in the oncoming years? It's a big threat. I mean, we are actually potentially looking at the end of the antibiotic era because of our chronic overuse. And when I say chronic overuse, I mean, in America today, there are 47 million prescriptions of antibiotics annually that are given to patients that do not need them for their infection or don't even have an infection. 47 million. So you can imagine what we are doing to our microbiome and to the resistance. So if you're going to uh, talk about the resistance, so basically that's like bacteria are just always going to mutate. They're always going to find ways to be outsmart the drugs. That's just what they do. And we should be thankful for bacteria, right? They are here to serve us. Mm -hmm. um, but what happens is like when we give these drugs all the time, they, they develop resistance. And then you have these super bugs that then you literally cannot treat. So then when you have somebody who is maybe older, gets pneumonia, we might be there at a point someday where we literally cannot treat them with antibiotics because mm -hmm. the way we're using them. And if we stay on the same trajectory that we're on today, so today we're, we see about 35,000 people die every year in America from resistant bugs. If we keep using them like we are, in 2050, we're going to see 10 million people dying every year from antibiotic-resistant superbugs, which is wild. So that's 2050 is not that far away. Um, so we are not moving in the right path when it comes to these resistant superbugs. So there is that component of it. It's really big. It's a big deal. And you know, these aren't around, um, you know, like only a threat in 2050. It's a threat now today. So we're, like, we're just, we're creating this story. We're creating this problem. Um, the other issue is the impact on the microbiome, which I'm sure, you know, I know you talked a little bit about this with, uh, Dr. Bush, but you know, I think this is almost equally as devastating and important as, you know, the resistance factor, because, you know, we are more bacteria than we are human cells outnumbered, uh, 10 to one. Uh, we got 100 trillion bacteria in us. We need them, right? We need them to, our microbiome and our gut is responsible for so much, right? Like, mm -hmm immunity, mood, vitamin absorption we talked mm -hmm. about, like all these things. And so when we just wipe that out and we, you know, we're like, okay, we're going to kill this pathogen. I have a cold or whatever. I just don't want to deal with it. All of a sudden you've wiped out your residential gut flora and then you're just setting your body up for a cascade of problems because we need that, right? Um, so I think those are the two main things that really come to mind um, when it comes to antibiotics. And I think that a lot of people just don't know that we don't need them often, right? Like if we have a cold, then we can, there's other ways we can deal with it than taking mm -hmm. antibiotics. Um, or you look at kids with ear infections. I mean, these are young, young little, little tykes and their microbiome is trying to you know, develop and within a few years, it actually starts to resemble one of an adult. But when we treat them with antibiotics for these recurrent ear infections, imagine the ramifications of that. And so it's not really shocking that, you know, so many kids have 
autoimmune disorders, you know, even developmental problems, allergies, mood, all these things can all be linked back to the gut. Mm -hmm. And when you wipe out that good bacteria and then you provide the bad bacteria the chance to thrive or candida or yeast or whatever, it's not shocking at all that you see all these other downstream effects. And so, um, yeah, I just want people to be aware that, wow, these have a place. They have a great place, <laughs> but we need to reserve from them for that. And otherwise, you know, create health. So we don't even need them. We don't even mm -hmm. need them in the first place. And if you get sick, wow, what can we do? Um, besides running for that Z pack? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ab I absolutely agree with you. Those are crazy statistics that Isn't you just wild? spat out. It's, it is, it is <laughs> wild. But when it comes to, look, let me just say this. When it comes to antibiotics, it's been 15 years since I've last used any antibiotic in my Amazing. body. Amazing, yeah. And of course, I've gotten sick from bacterial infections, uh, viral infections ever yeah. since, and I've been fine. Like, right. I'm alive because there's other ways to do it. Absolutely. Like, other just as, if not more powerful ways right. to treat the body in more gentle Yes. Well, you know what's ironic is that when you take an antibiotic and you wipe out that microbiome in your gut, the, the good, healthy guys, they actually, when you have, when you wipe that out, you actually have decreased gene expression of your immune cells. So mm -hmm. ironically, you're actually literally giving your immune system a hit mm -hmm. while you are taking your antibiotics. It just like doesn't even make sense. Yeah. So it's like, <laughs> it's like we throw the atomic bomb. Right. But then when the flowers don't grow back, we're like, oh, what are we going to do? You know, like. Right. It, yes. There's residual effects downstream that. Yes. It's just that we, we have, we have no care for because we are a society that's like. Do it now. Right. I, need, I need this handled. I need to go to work tomorrow. Fast. Yes. Exactly. Yes. And, but on top of that, you mentioned the lack of empowerment and understanding there are other ways because there are other really powerful Absolutely. ways. Absolutely. I mean, the nutrients that the earth has given us, like, you know, I know you're fully aware of this. They can actually, you know, serve as medicine for our mm -hmm. body. And I was actually thinking earlier that like oftentimes I like to say food is medicine, right? Like we don't, you don't need that. Use food as medicine. And what I think is even more kind of beautiful than that is like food is nourishment. Like food is food for our body, for the microbiome. The problem is when we're, you know, sick and eating all that other stuff that's mm -hmm. literally not food. It's just like packaged chemicals. Mm -hmm. You are, you know, just causing the, the growth of all the, the bad bacteria and then you can't get well, right? So I don't know. I think it really is, you know, it, it, it can be simple, right? It can be simple, like nourishment, rest, hydration, mm -hmm. you know, have a little ginger tea and, you know, give your, your body the time it needs to heal. This is, it's, it's incredible stuff because the, we have an opportunity for our body to recover. I, 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 right. I, I want people to understand like when they're sick, it, it's not supposed to be like, I feel like crap, let me take antibiotics and I'm fine. Right. Like that's for some reason your body's way of doing something. Yes. You may not even have an infection. Your body may just be detoxing and mobilizing all that crap that you've been <laughs> right. storing in your body. It right. might not even be an infection. Right. So imagine taking an antibiotics for a detox. That's crazy. <laughs> Right, but like Just that on. things that I mean, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if, if something like that happens because your absolutely your glands will you swell. Feel good, exactly. Yes. So I had a, I was I did a twenty one day detox from uh, my friend Dr. Alejandro Junger came to the show. <laughs> nice. And I did he he gifted me a detox and I did it, and towards the end of it, I I felt like I had the flu. <laughs> Like it's it, very it, common too, right? Yeah, so very know. common. Yeah, some yes. people know. And this was a week and a half ago. Mm -hmm. um, I okay. took a COVID test. It was negative. Oh my gosh. But because I was like, oh my God, am I, do I have COVID? Like, am I sick? Uh, but I slept 10 hours every single day, Friday, uh, Monday through Friday, 10 hours. I rested. I, I took it easy. I did work from my couch, wow. literally, because I was like, I can't work out. Your body was just like. My body asked for like to go yes. within, like just yes. relax, man. You know, totally. you've been like, going Grounding outside, making sure I'm yes. in the sun when the sun was out, yes. drinking tons of water, yes. the basics, right. the basics, right. fasting when I needed to, mm -hmm. when I was hungry, I ate not too much. I feel great. Right. Do you know what I mean? Using like, nature. I think the thing is, is so many people, they go, well, I'm not in a body, I, I can't afford to do all the like, quote, natural organic remedies. The reality is, is a lot of that is free, right? Mm -hmm. Sunshine, ground, rest, um, you know. Yeah, Taking buy, it easy, fasting. quality foods. Yeah. All that is at our fingertips. Like mm -hmm. healing is literally accessible. I mean, you had to go through some detox symptoms, mm -hmm. but now, right, look at what you have mm -hmm. versus what if you ran out and got some ibuprofen for your detox symptoms right. and some antibiotics. Could you imagine? Right. So, so, yeah, I, I think what people need people. to understand is working with the body when you're sick, not right. against the body. So yes. your body's all like a fever. You, you exactly. want to get some ibuprofen. Right. What are you doing? You know what I mean? Like, yes, th this, this is the problem. Like, it is the problem, right? Ibuprofen, Tylenol. So our bodies are designed 
perfectly. And so that fever is there to help rid the body of infection. Mm -hmm. And so when we take, you know, ibuprofen, Avil, boom, mm -hmm. gut problems, Tylenol, you're depleting your glutathione, critical for your detox pathway, mm -hmm. of course. It's true. You know, you wouldn't take that during your detox symptoms, but somebody might not know. And mm -hmm. so many people think it's just, quote, benign, right? Mm -hmm. But all these things. Do you know what I what I used to do in the beginning of medical school when I felt like crap? I would put two <laughs> hoodies on and go on the treadmill to oh work gosh, a sweat, sweat like out. to get my yes. core body temperature up. <laughs> totally. Now, thank God, I have a sauna in my place. <laughs> right. You know, like last but that week, you didn't have to build a sauna. Exactly. Totally accessible to you. Exactly. Pile on another. I love it. Like, how do I warm up my body temperature? You know, uh, so like the, the whole point is that yes. like how we how do we work with the body and how do we just go back to the easy stuff and like. Yeah, you may feel like crap for, you may take antibiotics, feel great the next day, but right. look at the residual damage you're doing long yeah. term instead yeah. of going, let me take three days, Right. listen to my body, get the rest that it needs. Yes. You take antibiotics, you, you can still sleep six hours, but <laughs> your body wants <laughs> 10 hours of detox, you know? Yes, absolutely. So it's it's yeah. beautiful that you're bringing this to light. Um, so what, is there anything you're doing moving forward? Are you putting out any programs for people to learn more about this? Like... How can we, are you thinking about empowering? Are you going to write a book? Like, oh my gosh, I have so many book ideas. Um, you know, I'm literally just getting going. I've got my website going. I am excited about empowering people in so many ways. And I do want to say really quick that a lot of people have been on antibiotics, probably listening to us, mm -hmm. thinking, oh crap, right? But you can heal your gut. And so I just want to, like, that's part of what I want to share with people is how to do that, right? Like, what are prebiotics? What are probiotics? How can I repair, you know, my gut lining? All those things. I think it's so critical. And I don't ever want to leave people with like a negative, you mm -hmm. know, vibe. It's like, oh my gosh, I've been screwed up because I took these when I was five, you know, mm -hmm. or whatever, or I last week or I'm going them right now. Mm -hmm. So I think there's always opportunity to bring that body back into balance. Um, so yeah, I'm um, now an integrative health practitioner. So I'm kind of just now rolling into my journey of what it looks like to truly empower people to create that health and save save the medications when you truly need it. When right? you truly, 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 need, truly it. need it. Yeah. And I think so many times we think we need it and providers think they need it. Um, but I mean, gosh, the power of getting to the root cause, that's something I learned at a systems level too. It's kind of fascinating when you're in healthcare and you're like, something goes wrong in healthcare. Everyone always says, well, you got to get to the root cause. You can't just fix it in that department. You mm -hmm. have to get to the root cause. And I'm like, exactly mm -hmm. right. You cannot put a band aid on whatever happened in that department in the same way you cannot put a band aid on a person and expect them to actually get better. Yeah, so, of I course. Mean, like this, the, I always tell a story of like my recurrent strep throat from like, 2005 to 2008. Right. I just kept, I get like twice a year. I was like, what is happening? Yes. But no one ever asked like, well, what was I eating? Was I eating so inflammatory foods? Nutrition never even comes it, up yeah, sometimes. Like, yeah. just, like foundation. Foundational yes. stuff, right? Maybe they'll ask, they were asking about exercise, but like, was I in a house that was like taking over Moldy. with mold? <laughs> yeah. You know, totally. like was my immune system just consistently suppressed over right. time? So. It, again, root cause unfortunately requires more time that a lot right. of allopathic doctors don't have because of insurance-based practices. Right. It's just that's the design and the paradigm. You're right. So even the best meaning intention doctors yes. ain't got the time. They don't have that time or even the training or the knowledge on all the different lab tests you can run, like mm -hmm. all these things so much. that can really, because we're all so individual. I always like to explain it to somebody. You could have 100 patients, all have IBS all different root causes, mm -hmm. chronic migraines, all different root causes, you know, all these things. And so you have to have that bio-individual targeted yeah. healing journey or else it's probably not going to work for you. I mean, that's yeah. just not how life is. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there's so many ways that we can go about, I mean, you mentioned nutrition. Mm -hmm. Like I think truly that every day if we woke up and used our, you know, the foods of the earth as medicine, you know, like whether it's even like matcha cranberries, pomegranate, these things are rich in polyphenols. Mm -hmm. Those are actually prebiotic. Mm -hmm. They can feed that good bacteria in our gut. They can feed the acromantia, all these things in our gut that then allow us to thrive. Mm -hmm. And it sounds silly, but something as simple as a diet rich in polyphenols, diverse diet leading to that diverse microbiome, that can impact literally everything from, you know, mood, depression, allergies, autoimmunity, joint pain, brain fog. Mm -hmm. I mean, it touches everything and it all can go back to what are we putting in our bodies? I think that's so amazing, mm -hmm, right? Like, mm -hmm. what are we eating? Is it from the earth? Is it like actually food? Mm -hmm. It's so simple. So simple. Is it whole food? Is it diverse? Yeah. And it's not like, all right, well, it's going to help 
reduce my bloating or, you know, balance my constipation diarrhea. You just mentioned right. di diseases that are multi-systemic. So, yes. Brain, so joints, right? Anxiety, yes. depression. Yes. Like, wow. Just all in the gut. All from the gut. Yeah. yeah. It's all wild. The I did the Vegas nerve show. So we talked a lot about oh, the connection okay. between the brain and the yeah. gut. And, and that the gut talks to the brain more than the brain. To the, I mean, that is profound. I had no mm -hmm. idea, right? Um, and I think it's just huge. And... I think the more that people kind of grasp that and then you feel it, once you're doing it, once you're living that life, you feel amazing. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want people to have. It's like, okay, yes, of course the goal is, you know, use less medication, less resistance, all that. But when people are actually living into that and their bodies in that homeostasis, it feels awesome, you right? Feel you amazing. have energy. You're ready to go. You want to go for a run. You want to be outside. You want to play with your kids, whatever you want to do. You have the energy for it, and that is what gives me passion. Because I think that we're, you know, we're put here on this earth for a reason. Our bodies are divine. This earth is amazing, and how cool that we can actually live into that, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. Megan, you are incredible. That's a m amazing, amazing combo that we had. <laughs> like I love it. The power of behind it is like to think to think that people can listen to this show and go, right. okay, well now my perspective on pharmaceuticals changed. <laughs> Not awesome. my perspective on antibiotics and the empowerment that I can work on my gut and my health as a whole. Yes. Just from a, what, 35-minute conversation, 45-minute conversation. Love it. So um, I hope it is powerful. How do people find you? Oh, well, I have my website, aholehealthlife.com, and on Instagram, I'm just at aholehealthlife. Okay. So follow her. Learn. <laughs> learn a little bit more. I know you put out videos, pictures, everything. So. Yes. And uh, welcome uh, to the show any other time when Ooh, you're back here. Yes. Just stop in. No, I'll be back. Next you're... time it's like snowing in Seattle. I'll You'll be out. here <laughs> when the sun. All right. Thank you. All right, what a beautiful conversation with Meg. She was incredible. I told you all there is a beautiful place for pharmaceuticals when we need them, but we need to change the perspective and paradigm of what conscious health is. And really, she's dropping bombs. This is what we do on this show. I love you all for joining the show. Thank you so much. Rate, review, subscribe, support the show. Let's reach millions, if not billions. Let's blow this thing up. Number one podcast in the world. I promise you that. It's coming soon. Love you all.